In this video, we will show you how the transport works on a cloud integration system. So the goal with the transport is to give you a much better understanding of how the, the transport works, what is going on with your, your transport and being able to manage, manage it. It will actually be much the same that you do if you connect it to a PIPO system. You have the same abilities here. Cool. If we look at the the way we're doing transport, and it's the same also for API management, all works together in one simple way. So the idea is that from the FIGAF you synchronize objects, and obviously you can also from CPI go back using um, a CPI helper. You add it to a ticket, you perform tests of this, then you create transports and configure the iFlow, then you can select Q, import in QA, and then once you have tested in QA, you create a new transport and move it into production, and then you're done and you can finish the transport. Um, we we did a change some time ago where we had one landscape that covered the full cycle. Now we have two landscape, one that covers this and one that covers this. This gives you some more ability to document what's going on and see the changes that are happening. So a landscape is something that's defined in the FIGAF tool. It, we're using our own transport mechanism, so you do not need to set up any of SAP's uh, transport mechanisms. Um, it allows you to handle transport, uh, the full transport flow. Um, you can define the flow. Uh, it's a linear flow. Uh, so move from dev to queue, from queue to production. Um, you can try, yeah, you transport the full iFlow. You cannot transport an individual object because that does not make sense that you just release I item number five uh, or a, a script instead of the full iFlow because an iFlow is a collection. Um, you can have more landscapes in, in the system, so you can define multiple setups, both from a new and a Cloud Foundry systems. And one thing you need to notice is you cannot modify a landscape once it has been created. So once it's created, you need to start with that and uh, work with those scenarios. We do have a term that we call virtual tenant, and it is not a licensed object, um, but this is where you can reuse your dev tenant at both dev and QA. And this is something that really saves a lot of uh, effort for customers. Um, that means you can have a full governance process, but only use one system. Um, you can add pre and pro, it will add pre and post fixes just as you normally do if you do these things mm -hmm. uh, manually. So whenever some customers are working with CPI, they would often just copy objects around and then they would have a way to, to handle that. With this approach, y you are transporting the object and it is really simple. <clears throat> And yeah, it simplifies the work and process direct should also enable you to have a full secondary iFlow inside of this uh, setup. If we look at the, the this composite landscape we have, you will create an initial transport of iFlow in version one. You'll may change it, go to version two, and then you'll from this create a new that move it into production and you can also move the configuration again if you find out you need to make modifications. All of these will then be four different transports that you can document. So we do have the term that's called composite landscape and this is where we would define these things. So we would set up the first the, the objects and then we will define it, uh, the, the landscape object. If you add an item multiple times, it will then see this as default as virtual objects. And then we can have a secondary uh, setup with this. Okay, so let's go and see how this looks. Up. So remember in my agents, I have two agents. Let me just check everything is working. Uh, uh, integration shoot and a new. Um, 
And we can see once we connected this, we created two landscapes. To manage them, you need to go into this manage landscape and here we can see them. We can delete them uh, if we don't need them anymore. So let's, cr and we can go and edit these ones. So the samples is there for as samples for you to get started. Um, it is obviously recommended to delete these because they do not really make, they should not be used in production. <laughs> let's put it like this. Okay. So let's say we has, have a landscape set up. We are using our, we have our two tenants in our system. So we have our two cloud integration and then we would have the new as the productive one. So I'll put in dev, uh, QA training. and prod so this is just so we know that this is from from this and we are reuse because we're reusing this to a lot of other scenarios so here we can set it up um the full landscape if we go back here we can then see some different options that we can set up when we're dealing with this and this is for the the rules that you have here for the landscape so let's go back and see what happens so we press next and now we can not make modifications to this uh, change and configure landscape back to environments configuration if we do that all the changes we have will be lost and we'll need to start over anyway that is not really so important here um you have the different artifacts here in the in the setup so we can select whether or not we want to deploy it after uh, transport we have a naming convention that we can validate before we're transporting we can set up if we want to have approvals on we want to have approvals on in this case from dev to qa but not from qa to production so so each of these are different and you can define what you want to do in both cases. Um, who can import this and do we want to restrict this to specific users? And here we can see that it has created pre mapping. So it will add a QA train to all the, the artifacts when we're going from dev to our virtual QA. If we look at our virtual QA, it will then remove it. If you had a virtual production system, it will also just modify this uh, QA to prod or whatever you would be using for this. But since we have two landscape, two systems, and I think that is the most normal scenario, this is what you would be doing on it. The next arm um, is landscape rewriting. And this is where you have an option to configure connections or systems that are global in the landscape that you want to always uh, rewrite. So this could be host names, it could be parameters, uh, systems that you know. From Dev to QA, they will always be different. Um, so yeah, is for host names, ERP host names, uh, success factor host names is one of the, the most common scenarios for these things um, that you want to put into this. Let, let's just see that. I guess the most of the time I'll be creating them on the fly as I am creating a landscape and figuring out how to deal with this. Um, and then the next one is... Uh, yeah, so we do have some different options. We did also for integration suite of from, from PI support connecting it with SAP's transport management. But for, for here, we only have uh, this deploy after transport. Um, yeah, and then require, require, require approvals. Review. This is. When you're doing your transport, you need to do review. But I think we need, and this is of the parameters, but let's just go back here to this. So we also have some, some options with tag where you can say it is only specific tags on objects that you want to transport. And this can greatly increase the flexibility of this. So you can create a landscape that allow you to only transport for a certain client. 
Um, artifacts. Uh, we have webhook integration down here. So if you want to send messages each time you're creating a new transport, each time you're doing something special, then you will be able to send it here, um, evaluate what it will be like, and then you can take this webhook and send it to Jira, uh, ServiceNow, whatever you want to integrate this full flow with. And that is one of the, the cool aspects of this. We can send these kind of events and then you can update um, the tickets that this has now been imported. And you can do this for both the two landscapes that you have as a part of this uh, this process. So once we have done all the things we need here, we just press save up here, configure landscape. What is it that, what settings do we have here? What's going on? And we can see the different system if they exist here or not. Um, and we select sum, submit. I think it is sub, sub, submitted. So yeah, it's just easy for us to, to edit this again. Um, okay. So now we have a landscape we can transport items in it um let's also just create a new user here that is called uh, we can give a devops role uh devops operator i think should be sufficient for this we have a license requester um if you want to allow these users to create licenses, and we'll try to log in here in uh, Edge. Eighty, eighty, fine. So now we have logged in and we can actually easily see our landscape has been defined here. And this is, uh, e the, this just makes it easier for you to start up with your development that you can do everything from in here. Um, so let's go back to the landscape configuration. So in the landscape here, we also want the, the approver to be Daniel. So we added Daniel as an approver. So that means he can also approve these things. Uh, and if we have assigned the right roles, that should be sufficient. Okay, so now we go to our iFlows here. So we have this sub uh, invoice to host. It's in an, a package called Ace uh, iFlow. We have a version of this. We can then assign it to a ticket. Press transport. We can select the landscape. Ah, we, we need to select it from the right landscape here. So we need to select from the dev before we can can transport this. So let's try it with this uh, HTTP start. We did. We can uh, obviously, as you recall last time, we do have the the versioning. We can compare versions that we are transmitting with the data to see what is going on. Okay. So let's go back here. We will select this one. We will, we can either do it from, from here in the overview. If you want to have like multiple objects, you can assign it to a ticket. First transform. We can select the landscape you want to use here. And then we will be using this dev to QA. And we can add our dear number for this case. And we can add some text for it. And then we need to request a license for this object. So now we have our object. We have the different artifacts here um, in our list. So the first one here, we have information about what's going on. We have the link to, if we add a, a link to our Jira system, we can also get it up here. Uh, we can assign different people to, the, to this uh, release. And one of the first thing we probably will do is to add all dependent objects. This will ensure we're getting all the different artifacts for this specific scenario. 
Uh, so here we can see we also added the, the package in. So if we want to start the transport, I will select it here and create a transport. And then obviously it is important that we have some parameters in this one. So we do have one here that is called SAP product uh, field ID. We can use when we are governing this and we want to map this to something else. And now we are transporting this item to something else when we are doing the transport. I'm still a developer here, uh, so I can see what is going on here. So let's see here what happens. We are going back here and in our, in our landscape, we can see this, this transport. Uh, we can download a parameter report and this is a really helpful tool um, to get you started with the different scenarios here. You can see what are the different values you have. Granted, it is better if you have a global list of these things or a lot of significant different scenarios. We can send it to approval. And now it is sent for approval. Um, let me just see here. So one of the things we do have for this is we do have a uh, transport approver can approve the uh, reviews. This is good if you're doing QAs and, and evaluations of these things, because then you cannot do review of your own transport. So now I can see here, I as a super user cannot approve this. If we go into the the user that is Daniel and look at the transport, I can see here there's one here that is waiting for my approval. I can go in here and I can validate this transport. Check everything is good. I can check the I can use the compare model here to compare what's going on. And obviously we do not have this item already in production. So let me say I'll approve this. No, if it rejected, I could obviously reject it. Um, we can now import this into this QA environment. Um, and now it is on the QA environment. So if we look back here at it, we can see it is now using the QA uh, setup here. So if we open this iFlow, this is the package, the iFlow directly. Here we can then see the, the iFlow, the, all the parameters we can see. So the URL here has been started with slash HTTP train. So we know everything on this is made in this specific context. And that also means that in here we can go in and we can check the, the iFlow and see what this has been modified to. Let's make a modification to this iFlow. And let's add a exchange property host. This will be S4 host. So we'll just add an exchange properties. This is uh, S4 dev to fnaf.local and we can save this save as version deploy and then we can use the figaf tool to, or cpi helper to synchronize this back into figaf So now we have a new version of this and let's just before we modify this, we also need to go into our landscape here and we can go in our, not this one, in the, we need always to be using the composite landscape for these things. So down here in my parameters, I can now add this as parameter, QA train, QA as a parameter here. Um, and press submit, save, and so now I can create a new transport. I can either reuse the existing one, 
let's just try that. So go to our external ticket. So we found that there was a problem. We needed to go in and fix this. Um, so what we can do is here we can switch it back to development. So now it will be in development. We can go here and we can select update to latest version. So now we can see we actually got new versions of these parameters in. Um, we can start our transport again. And open the transport. If I now do a compare here, I can see we got this that has been changed and we can drill into what has been added here of the field. If I look at the parameters now, I can see that this S4 host has been automatically replaced to this. So we do not need to do any modifications when setting up this, uh, this scenario. And this is obviously where the sex parameter export or report makes a lot of sense because you get all the data in one go to handle all the scenarios. I'll send it to approval. If you set up email services, you can obviously get an email for these uh, scenarios. It is waiting for approval. Approve. And yeah, no, now both me and super user here can import it and you can set up who can approve and and apply these changes. But the, the thing you, it is just to give you two I principle to allow both users to actually approve these, these changes. Okay. So now we have created the new transport. We can go here and we can say, okay, now we want to move to, to production. Same zero number. And we obviously can also add the test cases here if we had them. We can start the transport here. So it has not started the transport yet, but what we can now see is these items has been linked. So we have this transport overview here. So we can see that we have transport one that was not done anything with. And then we have transport two where we created transport three based on this one. Um, so this is the way you can see what is going on and who has the, the different objects. We can then, we do not have a approver here, so we can just import this uh, into the product, uh, productive system here. Um, and it, we can see here the mapping that has been applied for this to work. And then it synchronizes, it saves all the artifacts that we have. And if we look at the iFlow now, here in QA, Uh, the configuration we can see it is using the QA because we did not set up another renaming uh, artifacts between this. Now, once we have completed the transport, we will go back here uh, to our transport, to our transport here, and then we can go in on the transport and mark it as a result. So we say, okay, now this is done. Uh, we should probably also do the same on transport number one does one option up here we can go in and set it to resolve um, just so you have a way to say okay now we're done with these uh, these artifacts good so that is the the transport process um, giving you much more flexibility in understanding what's going on we're using the virtual tenants etc one of the cool things I like is we have this uh, landscape report that gives you an understanding about the current uh, landscapes you have. And we will see it up here. Um, here we can select the different landscapes that we have and we can see here the, the artifacts that we have. An easy way to see if there's any difference is to select this one. This will see if we have, so here we have our artifact that we just transported what it is in the QA and in the productive system. So if you have made a, a change, so let's just update this. Uh, update our 
original iFlow here. Uh, this is the original one. Save as version. So now we have this as 9. We'll synchronize it. Synchronization finished. And if we refresh now, we should see that this is number 9. And then it's easy just to go in here and we say, hey, there's a difference here and we can do the we have the same comparison out here between the different ones uh, to see what is actually the real difference between these two scenarios. Um, just to make it a lot easier for you to manage the, the setup. Um, yes. So that's the, the landscape overview, transport process, parameters, we covered that. Um, we do have some more talk about uh, multi-state landscape. There's some good blog by Mike Lehman here, where he talks about this thing that if you want to use the the tool to handle the multiple scenarios, how does that work? We talked about webhooks. You can set it up to send messages each time something has changed. Uh, there is a good API that allow you also to, from external systems, to invoke the VGAF tool. Um, and if you want to see all the different webhooks you have or all the different APIs, there is an easy way to just go in and see the different APIs that we do have to handle these scenarios. And then we can just a little more how do you handle projects and I think a lot of customers has this problem they have some long-term projects that's like six months before they need to be delivered and then you have um, a new light and lighter landscape that you need to deliver sometimes you would have a support landscape uh, this is also what correspond to your SAP landscape and then you have the projects or maybe multiple project landscapes where you have the different versions in. You can either transport it to, to, to production or move it into the QA or dev QA and, and production. So for iFlow, it's a little bit of a challenge, this thing, because you do not have really a good way to, to, well, we can see version, we can see what's being changed, but you cannot do a merge on it. If it was just code, it would be easy to merge, uh, but you, this is all something you need to do manually. So, yeah, it does two landscapes you have. You have a project that goes on and a support landscape that goes on. Um, and the, the way we, we should just is if you just need one landscape, you can have the three tenants or the virtual tenant and your productive one. Then you're doing version one, 100 moving it into production. Then the project start and you create a new version of this, probably move it into QA, then revert it back to version 100, the productive version, fix it and move it into QA and production or via QA, whatever you need for that to, to set up. Roll back the, the version to add the patch and then move it. So it is possible to, to manage uh, projects in a single landscape. You just need to be careful about what you're doing. I think the landscape report is also going to give you a lot of insight about what is going on there. We added this uh, transport overview that where you can see subsequent tickets and see when you moved something to production and canceling, etc. Uh, and hopefully you've seen how yeah you can have can have multiple landscapes. The virtual tenant is really a powerful one if you want to um, compare what's going on. Uh, we do have the Git repository. We will cover that in in another module where we can push all the data into. But it is not a, a CI/CD pipeline because that is just to, going to be a lot of effort getting that up and running and see what's going on. Um, then we have the BPM comparison. I think this really is a good thing. There's also mapping comparison to see what has changed with two different mappings. So that was all I wanted to cover in this session. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so see you in the next video.